beneath the crippled ship, lifting the coal out of the water. The 500-foot-long warship was placed at an angle so its propeller in the rear and its underwater sonar dome in the front would hang over the side. Using steel braces, the coal is being welded to the deck of the Blue Marlin for the long ride home around Africa. Because of security concerns, it will not go through the Suez Canal. The Navy estimates it will cost at least $150 million to repair the ship. But Pentagon sources say damage, especially to the keel, may be greater than first believed. This $1 billion warship, officials warn, may have to be scrapped. As for cooperation between the U.S. and Yemen, it seemed to break down completely today. Yemen's government, apparently reacting to what it perceives as American arrogance, refused to allow any U.S. Navy helicopters to land on its soil. That left American investigators stranded on warships where they now live. And one more concern. ABC News has learned that American officials now suspect that Yemen authorities deleted critical parts of a videotape taken by a harbor surveillance camera the day the coal was hit. Increasingly, American officials wonder if Yemen's government might have something to hide. John McWethy, ABC News, the Pentagon. Still overseas today, in Kazakhstan, two Russians and an American took off from the Baikonur space station. They're going to spend nearly four months as the first tenants of the $60 billion International Space Station. Man will now stay in space. When we come back, presidential politics, where the candidates want to campaign and where they must. And later in the broadcast, the town that is trying to silence its witches. And now the race for the presidency. In a race this close, with less than a week to go, the presidential candidates are trying to get to all the places still in doubt, which they think they can win, and to others they cannot risk losing. Just take a quick look at the map. Those are the 15 states there which we think are still in play, could go either way. And they're so important because without a combination of them, neither Mr. Bush nor Mr. Gore can get to the 270 electoral votes needed to win. So tonight from us, the candidate strategy what they think they need to do. Joining us first from the road is ABC's Dean Reynolds, who covers the Bush campaign. Dean, tell us, if you will, where does your candidate want to go, and who does he think he has to talk to? Well, Peter, the candidate is jumping right into those toss-up states, Oregon and Washington State tonight, and on to Minnesota and Iowa tomorrow, and then Illinois later in the week. He is clearly trying to shore up his base, but also take advantage of whatever appeal Ralph Nader may have in states like Washington and Oregon at the expense of Al Gore. Earlier today, the governor was in California visiting a homeless shelter, hoping to show off a more compassionate image to swing voters in that state and to the nation as a whole. And Dean, there's a particular reason I gather why your candidate wants to get up there to the Pacific Northwest. He wants to get away from the South in part or thinks he needs to. Well, that's right, because uh, polls show that Florida is now in play, if not altogether for Gore. So the electoral math means that the uh, governor has to shore up enough votes in states like Washington, Oregon, and Minnesota as a cushion if Florida falls out of his grasp. Is the message getting any sharper? Well, as a uh, sort of an ulterior theme to the compassionate message, there is a tougher message. And uh, you can tell by looking at uh, this Bush campaign ad that was running today entitled Nonsense. There has never been a time in this campaign when I have said something that I know to be untrue. There's never been a time when I've said something untrue. Really? Well, the Bush campaign says that that is not a negative attack. They're merely quoting the vice president. Thanks Here. very much, Dean Reynolds, with the Bush campaign. Now we go to Terry Moran, who is with the Gore campaign. Terry, where does your candidate want to go, and to whom does he most want to appeal now? Florida, Peter. They're going to keep the heat on in Florida, where the Gore campaign likes its chances. Uh, Al Gore will leave here in Oregon. Uh, it will leave the West Coast tonight red eye to florida and what he's targeting are beyond the senior citizens the baby boomer families in florida in central florida orlando and tampa with a message on the environment and a concert by jimmy buffett i neglected to mention that you're in the pacific northwest when he gets there what will his campaign strategy be who does he need to talk to 
Well, he does need to talk beyond the senior citizens in Florida, and what he wants to get at is uh, some of those issues that he thinks the families of Florida uh, are interested in. He's going to talk about the big choice, the tax cut, and the environment. And is he sharpening his attack on Mr. Bush? No question about it, Peter. Here in Oregon today, he gave what uh, was, without question, the most aggressive, toughest speech he's given in a while. Uh, he went after Governor Bush, sharpening his edge on his attack on Governor Bush's tax cut, saying it's a giveaway to the rich. Uh, I'd probably ask the same of both of you. Is this an exhausting last week for him, or does he stand up to it well? Actually, it seems to me, Peter, that, that Al Gore likes the long days and hard work. It's something that, uh, that he kind of prides himself on, and he's certainly wearing us down. Thank you both very much. Terry Moran with Mr. Gore and Dean Reynolds with Mr. Bush. Let me go and talk now to our resident political analyst, George Stephanopoulos. Mm -hmm. Turnout's the big key, we'd agree. In who's, the race this close. Who's got an edge? Either one, do you think? Right now, I think one of the reasons the Bush campaign appears so much more confident right now, even though the race is close. Fisk, eight video set to send your way. If you would make just a simple $250 pledge to WVIZ this evening, you're going to receive eight videos. The first video is the very one that you're watching this evening, but you're also going to receive the very best of Victor Borga. That's both act at one and two on one pit tape. You're also going to get Victor Borga then and now one, Victor Borga then and now two, Victor Borga then and now three. You're going to receive the lost episodes of Victor Borga one and two. These are tapes of episodes they thought were gone of the Victor Borga show, but they captured them. You're also going to receive the Victor Borga birthday gala. You're also going to receive a video, or a compact disc, I should say, of Victor Borga music. One side playing very seriously and one side with some of the best... Um, for, for Bill Clinton in 96. He's got to get black voters, African Americans in the big cities to come out. And that's an irony. You know, all year long we've been talking about the suburbs. On election day, the Democrats are going to be focusing to get a big surge. Philadelphia. Um, inner city. In inner city. Detroit. Milwaukee. A last thought from you on the intensity of the campaign ads. When do you get to make your last campaign ad? this week. They're right up to the edge of it. They have to look at the situation on Thursday, make a decision on Thursday, ship and send those ads on Friday. Hey, after that, the strategists sit, just sit back and watch with the rest of us. It's up to the field grunts then to get out the vote on the ground. And, and have that opportunity to have the last reaction. The last word. I just talked to somebody in the Bush campaign right before we came out. He swears the ads they have up right now are the ones they're going to stick with. You don't necessarily believe it. Actually, this time I do. Oh, do you? Okay. I do. <laughs> Thanks very much, George Stephanopoulos. Now, the Green Party candidate, Ralph Nader, was campaigning in Michigan and in Minnesota today, states where he could indeed cut on to not only Mr. Bush's support, rather Mr. Gore's support, but maybe even into Mr. Bush's. Mr. Nader urged voters to vote their conscience, and his campaign unveiled a TV advertisement mocking the idea of what he calls voting for the lesser evil. Now, next on the broadcast tonight, we'll take a closer look at a looming issue in this final week. Who will best protect Social Security? World News Tonight with Peter Jennings and a closer look. Brought to you by Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. There were a couple of indications earlier in the broadcast about how important Social Security has become as an issue in the presidential campaign. Everyone agrees it needs fixing, and everyone agrees that if it isn't reformed, it will eventually run out of money. George W. Bush wants to modernize Social Security, as he puts it, by allowing workers to take a small share of their Social Security payroll tax to invest themselves. Al Gore wants to maintain the existing system. He says he would save Social Security by reducing the national debt and giving Social Security extra money. ABC's John Martin tonight takes a closer look from the battleground state of Missouri. At a small robotics company in a St. Louis suburb, the Bloomers, father and son, work side by side. George Bush's plan to allow them to invest a small portion of their Social Security payroll taxes in the stock market is where they part ways. I could do with it what I want. If I make a bad decision, then it falls back on me. And I don't have to complain about anybody else messing my money up. It's retirement money. It's Social Security money. And uh, if you lose it, it's gone. The issue comes down to this. Will voters believe Al Gore's promise to protect Social Security the way it is, 
or will they take a gamble and trust George Bush's plan to privatize part of it? Some Missouri voters are not sure Social Security will be there for them, so they are ready to take a risk. Mike Dubas is 29, father of three. By giving all that money to Uncle Sam to make his 2% on it, or me turn around and make 27 or 30% on it, uh, I'd have to go that way. That way has a simple appeal. I just want more of a say-so of what I can do with my own money. At a union hall, retirees worry that Bush is gambling with their Social Security benefits. Oh, I don't think nobody has the option to take my Social Security and invest in nothing. It's mine. Gore targets independents like Hank and Loretta Goering to drive home the point that the Bush plan will take a trillion dollars out of the system. They got a phone message by actor Ed Asner. This is Edward Asner. The Bush plan drains money that is needed now to pay for current benefits. I don't think we have enough money to cover both promises. Neither candidate says how he will guarantee Social Security's future, and both resist saying it will cost more money. Do you never see the need then in the future of either raising taxes or cutting benefits? I certainly hope not. An ABC News poll shows voters divided on who will best protect Social Security, but 58% supported a plan like Bush's. In this era of stock market wealth, they see his idea as an opportunity, not the end of Social Security. John Martin, ABC News, St. Louis. There are, as you well know, a lot of complexities in Social Security in both of these plans. If you go to our website, abcnews.com, that may help. When we come back, Steve Allen, the original thinking man's comic. On Wall Street this October 31st, they are looking back at what has been a turbulent month. Technology stocks were hit hard in the past month, but they were hot today. The Nasdaq was up 178 points, more than 5%. The Dow Jones Industrials were up more than 135 points to close at 10,971. The Federal Trade Commission has released its list of the 10 most popular Internet scams. The list includes fraudulent auctions, where the merchandise never arrives, all manner of credit card scams, and a practice called cramming, in which consumers are billed for web pages they do not own. The entertainer Steve Allen has died. Even before Elvis, it was really Steve Allen who first began to loosen up the uptight 1950s. In the golden age of television, Mr. Allen had that quality that all great comedians have. He was fearless. Here's ABC's Bill Blake Martin. The Steve Allen Show. Funny, intelligent, and detached all at once. Called the most talented man on TV in the decade when TV was born. Steve Allen invented the late night talk show as we know it. He created The Tonight Show. This program is going to go on forever. <laughs> he thought up that mix of talk and comedy, the man on the street, all ad libbed on live TV. I'm crazy even as a toddler, he beamed with humor and smarts from a vaudeville family. His mother, funniest of them all, even after her son made it big. Uh, the manager didn't want you to disappoint me. No, 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 no. Dis disappoint you. The manager didn't want you to disappoint you. He never stopped producing, wrote more than 5,000 songs, 38 books on everything from how to be funny to religion and morality. In recent years, he campaigned against violence and bad language on TV but he'll be remembered for the way he showed you didn't need it. You could be both outrageous and decent all at once. Bill Blakemore, ABC News, New York. Steve Allen was 78. When we come back, a witch hunt in the bayou. Finally this evening on this Halloween witchcraft. At least half a million Americans now describe themselves as witches in that they practice witchcraft in one part of the country or another. Many people find what witches do completely inoffensive. But not so in part of Louisiana. ABC's Peggy Waymire tonight reports on what is acceptable in New Orleans is anything but not far away. When it comes to spirituality, New Orleans is a city of contrasts. Attend mass on Sunday morning, visit fortune tellers and voodoo queens by noon. So I am your messenger. I have... But practices that go mostly unnoticed in New Orleans are causing a stir just 70 miles down the road in Homa a conservative bayou town that's home to more than 100 churches and a coven of witches. We are a the main belief in witchcraft, the main tenet is harm none. 
Not everyone in town thinks these witches, who call themselves Wiccans, are harmless. Many fear they are introducing dangerous occult spirits into the community. The Wicca Church is against everything that we stand for as a Christian nation and as a Christian faith. And we want to stand up and say no in our community. We want to say absolutely not. In an effort to end witchcraft in Homa, a resident here anonymously filed a complaint against the witches using a very old Louisiana law that forbids fortune telling. They may cleanse this temple and those within. The witches believe that through these rituals and the reading of tarot cards, their gods and goddesses will help direct their futures. Local officials enforcing the parish ban on fortune telling sent a detective to the coven to photograph the evidence. All of a sudden, boom, we get a knock on the door. And he said, whenever I'm going to turn these pictures into my superiors, and whenever I, they look at them, they're going to determine if it is fortune telling. If it is, then I'm going to come back to arrest you. The ACLU is trying to abolish that threat once and for all. The Civil Liberties Group is now suing Louisiana on behalf of the witches to abolish the 1928 law it considers unconstitutional. We don't protect the wicked free speech rights, then the Baptist and the Catholic free speech rights are at risk. HOMA officials now admit that since fortune telling is part of the Wiccan religion, they don't have a case against the witches. But these Wiccans say they fear the witch hunt will continue until the fortune telling law is off the books for good. Peggy Waymeyer, ABC News, HOMA, Louisiana. Hail and farewell. That's our report on World News Tonight, later this evening on Nightline, a town meeting about third political parties with Ralph Nader and Jesse Ventura. I'm Peter Jennings. We hope you have a good evening. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.